Hi guys, welcome to my channel, The Narcissist Guide. Thank you for tuning in today. I hope that you're having a good day. For those of you who are going through healing, I hope that you're staying strong and that you are coping well. Now, in today's episode, I would like to talk about healing after narcissistic abuse. And this is, this is a period, a healing period that is different for 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 everyone else you know you cannot put yourself or use the same general you know recovery tips that you can see on the internet or read about on the internet because it is different for everybody for everyone it's different you have been in a different situation the abuse of the narcissistic abuse you have ex been exposed to or you had to endure is different than when you have been in a marriage or a friendship or it's your family who is a narcissist uh, you know it's different sometimes people will break contact with their own parents uh, you know uh, or some go through a divorce with a narcissist and there are still children involved how do you cope with healing then or go through healing because you still have to maintain a level of connection with the narcissist because of the children um, and it's different for someone who is who just had a f friendship not just because but let's say who just had a friendship with a narcissist it's easier for them maybe to break contact with a narcissist but maybe it's also hard because what if you know that narcissist as a friend for a very long time and that narcissist has children who you have created a bond with or a level of connection you know and you you have to break contact with that child as well because maybe the child is still you know is not an adult yet still a baby or you know and you have no legal right or anything to still meet that child so it's different for that person as well but of course a few things after discovering that you have been dealing with a narcissist few points are the same similar to everyone else what everyone else is going through and the most most first shocking thing is the shock of betrayal because you are seeing you've seen the true mask the true character of the narcissist and you feel misled you feel lied to you feel manipulated you feel that they have used and abused you you feel angry you feel so angry that you want to take revenge that you want to you know take revenge on the narcissist yeah uh, people go through periods of uh, having difficulties to sleep or accept the situation even uh, accept the, accepting that you have been dealing with someone who has been very toxic who has ruined your life even you know because of this narcissistic abuse narcissistic abuse please don't underestimate it because it it truly takes away people's healthy concept of life I've said that before it takes away your own confidence your personality it it stops you from growing it's blocking you you've been wasting your time with this narcissist and it feels like a waste of time because you you you're coming to terms that it has all been a illusion that it all has been an act a show the narcissist performed you will notice that the pattern of chaos and destruction it has caused within your circle of friends within your family uh, you know or even with your children if you have children with a narcissist or you have to endure triangulations with the narcissist and you have become uh, and it made you lose your own confidence because triangulation is one of the most toxic tactics a narcissist can use and triangulation is when they involve a third person into the relationship or you know triangulation is 
something to make you go into a mode of being competitive because you feel that there is competition because they're using a third person it can be their ex-partner ex-boyfriend ex-wife ex-husband and they use them to triangulate right and that is to make to, to make you feel anxious scared scared that the narcissist will leave you for someone else because they want you to see that they are popular that other people want them you know it, it triangulation is a very uh, flexible term something very flexible that the narcissist can use it doesn't need to be uh, their ex-boyfriend or ex-partner ex-husband it can be a colleague of work you know uh, who they who they talked to and said like oh listen you know uh, Jessica at work I told them this 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 and this uh, and they and and she told me to leave you because you're not good to me you're not good to me you know and maybe Je that Jessica told that to the narcissist because it was her opinion based on what the narcissist told that Jessica all right but that's just to make you feel like you should be thankful to have the narcissist in your life one of the tactics they use had to create anxiety jealousy crush your confidence okay and it makes you distrust other people because it can also be that they use a family member to triangulate all right well anyways you've been exposed to all of that but the shock betrayal is what I what I said is the the part that you need to start to accept okay accept because you've been a victim of narcissistic abuse and being a victim of narcissistic abuse is very shocking okay it is very 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 shocking but when you start to accept that you have been the victim of narcissistic abuse it is time to go through that transition of healing healing is the key to regain control of your personality regain control of your concept healthy concept of life find yourself back to be able to appreciate things more work on your ambitions more easier and on your goals if you have been through healing a lot of people look on your phone look back at a picture of before you were with the narcissist and how you look now without the narcissist you can see a sparkle on your face you can see a glow on your face okay that means that you are either have healed or still working on your healing because it's gonna take time depending on the situation you have been uh, in what kind of situation you've been with the narcissist uh, you know how heavy the impact was on you it is different for everyone else you cannot compare yourself but there are certain steps that are the same when you go through healing like I said first you have to accept the situation as it is and when you accept the situation for as it is you can work on the next part and the next stage of how do I heal how do I heal from this and the only one who can help you heal is you there is no one else no one else gonna help you if you don't help yourself okay there's apps you are responsible for your own healing process and when you go through healing emotionally you will be all over the place you will be happy one day you will be angry the next day you'll be confident and be thinking like I made the best choice okay and then the next day you will feel angry again or you hear news from this narcissist or through their flying monkeys and they have impact on your healing again because the narcissist when you hear the name of this narcissist it really distracts you from your healing let alone all the things they tell you about the narcissist okay or even the narcissist self will try to hoover you back in while you are healing trying to break that no contact that you've de that you have determined to stay and hold 
on to that no contact. And you're breaking the no contact because the, this narcissist is trying to hoover you back in. Yes, you cannot go no contact when you still have children because you still need to have a level of communication. But like I said, even if you need to keep a certain level of communication, make it as minimum as possible. Okay? Soul distance yourself from this narcissist. Do not, do, do not longer allow the narcissist to look into your soul. Your soul is worth preserving. And you are the only one who can protect your soul. No one else can protect your soul. Not a person with a personality disorder. A narcissist will not protect your soul. A narcissist will crush your soul. Okay, so if you need to maintain a level of communication with a narcissist, work on soul distancing. Close your soul for the narcissist. Block it. All right, don't engage. Don't tell them anything about your life, what you're going through. It's none of their business. It's only your business, not the narcissist's business. The narcissist doesn't need to know where you are in life. Because a narcissist doesn't want you to grow in life. A narcissist doesn't want you to be happy without the narcissist. Okay, they hate it if you're happy without the narcissist. Take that as your revenge. Keep in mind that when you are healing, the best revenge is when you are happier. Because you will come out stronger. You will regain that healthy concept of life. And if you're angry, during the healing process and sometimes you have this urging feeling of I want to tell this narcissist one last thing I want to send the narcissist just this one message don't do it do not give them that pleasure that's the exact response they want if you send them that message the narcissist will feel that they still have control that the narcissist is still in the four in the in the in your mind in the front of your mind they want they, they they feel happy that they're still in your mind happy is the correct word they feel satisfied they feel happy that they can still hurt you from a distance do not give them that satisfaction okay don't give them that satisfaction so write it down write down when you're angry pretend that you send it that you that you want to send that message to the narcissist write it in a book write down what you're angry about write down the lies they've told you hold them accountable in that book hold them accountable in a book write down all the all the toxic toxic things the narcissist has done Okay, you might not remember all the lies they told you, but just the ones that come up for yourself, write them down. Write them down as if you are sending them to the narcissist. But don't read it back. Don't read it back. Just as a reminder for yourself, just to get it off your chest, write it down. And you will see after a few days, you'll be like, oh, I'm so happy that I didn't send this to the narcissist. A lot of people who sent messages to a narcissist after narcissistic abuse and breaking free from a narcissist and out of anger sent a message or have that urging feeling to send the message to the narcissist always regret, always regret that they've sent that message. And like I said, you know, in previous episodes as well, go no contact, you know, that's very important. The no contact is very important. Don't be sensitive to the hoovering as well of a narcissist. You know, when a narcissist is saying, oh, can we still be friends? No, you cannot be friends with a narcissist. It's already hard to be friends with someone in a normal healthy relationship after a breakup. It's not impossible with a healthy person, you know, but with a narcissist, it's impossible. It's impossible to stay friends with a narcissist. It's, it's just, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna happen. It's it's making you. You're going to cling on hope because when this narcissist wants you wants to be friends with you or stay friends with you after a ro romantic relationship, they are going to try to give you hope. They're going to see where you are in life, 
and they can visibly see if and how not not just if no how how can i brainwash you back into the narcissist life it makes it easier because you're opening your door you're opening your door of your home and in your home is the soul okay you're opening your soul you're leaving the door open to your soul if you leave the door open to your soul the narcissist will know how to enter and close that door for you and then the narcissist is in your soul yet again I always say grief for something that has never existed because the narcissist is fake an award-winning award-winning actor or actress you know go through that pain period of loss you lost someone who, who never existed okay and I tell you in most cases I know that some people have been with a narcissist for so many years so many years and it takes a lot of lot of how do you say you feel like that your situation is so worse so bad worse than everyone else's but actually that's not true because it doesn't matter how long that narcissist has been in your life yes you've lost time the narcissist wasted time but don't look back at the past don't look back at the past and because if you're holding on to the past you're not recovering you're in this transition period towards freedom the door to freedom and you're the only one who can make sure that you go to through this transition period towards freedom you're the only one who can do it there's no one else who can do it for you okay and I tell you it's amazing after you've been through healing during the healing period the first few months will be difficult you have you have problems with sleeping you have insomnia anxious feelings stress panic attacks all those feelings come but you have to face it it those feelings are forcing you to reflect on yourself those feelings are going to trigger you to make a change because you feel anxious you can control that you're the one who can fix it and resolve it you can change you can change the situation for yourself you can change that anxious feeling and say okay I have, I have to face this anxious feeling reflect what what am I gonna do about this feeling what am I gonna do about it when you're angry reflect think it triggers something you get angry make sure that that anger goes away writing stuff down by writing stuff down write write down why you you're angry write down that what you don't want to feel anymore okay and then after a while those feelings will become less and less and less and less and you're starting to see the light again you are starting to see that hope again you're starting to see yourself back again you're starting to see your personality coming back again you're starting to be able to think for yourself independently something that you couldn't do with the narcissist you're able to regain that healthy concept of life you're becoming so much more confident so much more assertive you will appreciate so much more you will transform you'll go into a next level in life something the narcissist will never have and will never be okay you will feel exactly uh, so confident so confident and so much more assertive that you will do stuff that you've never done before you will get out of your comfort zone you will do things you never imagined you would ever do things that you were maybe embarrassed to do or shy to do all of a sudden you're doing it you're doing them you're doing them because you're like I don't care I've got nothing to lose and I'm going for it 
That is the feeling you will get. I swear to God, you will go through that. You will get there. You will truly get there. And you will see your happiness, your stability, no chaos in your life, no one disturbing your peace. You're setting up healthy boundaries. And like I said, healthy boundaries are important, but don't apply them to everyone, everybody in general. Because I feel that mutual understanding, understanding, truly understanding is the key to changes. That is the key to change, mutual understanding. Okay, boundaries are good. You can apply certain boundaries, but remember one thing. It's better to customize your boundaries based on the person you have in front of you, because that person in front of you might be in a different stage in life. That person is going through layers of life as well. And maybe you can be so helpful for that person, you know, by understanding who that person is, you know, understanding what that person is going through. Okay, because sometimes a boundary can have an opposite uh, uh, effect. It can have, have the opposite effect. Or you might feel guilty afterwards because you put, uh, you're setting up a boundary for that person and you feel like, oh, this person, no, I shouldn't have applied this boundary to that person. Okay? And distract yourself. You know, have some good hobbies. Hobbies, things you would like to do things you love to do, things you love to do before the narcissist. Write down your ambitions, your goals, what you would like to accomplish in life for yourself. You know, you will find meaning in your life again because you will see things that you never dreamed of that you would ever do before even the narcissist. So you will even, you will do so much, so much soul searching, you know, reflect even about things that you wanted to do before you have met the narcissist and you thought like oh i'm gonna do that but suddenly they change they become different goals they become different ambitions different appreciations in life and that is what's going to change you as a person you will do things that you never thought you would do before you will you will see you will see you you will see your purpose you will see a purpose you will see a purpose in things that you never thought there was a purpose in. It's, it sounds very strange or maybe cliche even to you, but I swear it that's the effect it has when you come out of this as a winner, when you become a survivor. So it is very important to put aside the mindset of I was or I am a victim and go to the mindset of I am a winner, a winner, you know. The winner in your life, your own life, not someone else's life, your own life. You have to work towards that. You know, if you use the word victim, victim, victim all the time, that's not going to help you. You know, of course you haven't been a victim. You've been a victim of narcissistic abuse. You didn't ask for a narcissist to be part of your life. You didn't invite the narcissist. You, you, you've, you've signed your soul over to the narcissist. That's what you've done, but you are taking it back. Okay. You're taking back control of yourself, of your life. And that is what's so important. Okay? So when you go through this healing period, work towards that, that winner, becoming a winner. Okay? You know, don't use the word victim. Take that away. You know, even though you know that you've been a victim, but, you know, don't think of it as, oh, I'm a victim, I'm a victim, I'm a victim. Because if you... B label yourself as a victim you will stay the victim you know and you don't want to be the victim you don't deserve to be a victim you have to uh, say that you're a winner make yourself worthy to say that you are a winner okay so that is what i wanted to talk to you about today i can talk about this for a very very long time um and i i, I surely i surely will talk about healing more and more uh, but i will do that in se several episodes so it doesn't become uh, you know too long of an episode for each episode all right so thank you so very much for listening today please leave your comments on the comment box in uh, on my youtube channel the narcissist guide i would really appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel thank you so very much for today and see you next time